Next drill, we're gonna do a transition drill where we're gonna do a regular hit back to the outside hitter. He's gonna pass, set, hit. And he has to choose line or angle. And as soon as he lands, he's gonna transition off as if there's an overpass right away. The setter's gonna to toss themselves a pass right away and set him right away. So they're gonna to have to hit two times in a row in this drill, but both times they have to hit a different spot. So line and angle or angle and line, something like that. So this is a great transition drill for you guys to practice in game. If you get dug once, just don't hit the same area, increase your chance of scoring a point, right? Always change it up.
process is just Kai and me today. We're gonna slow down our practice and really focus on the finer aspects of our technique instead of just playing as much. Uh, since Brant and Chris couldn't make it today, so Kai's gonna focus on trying to keep a symmetrical, solid platform. And we're gonna do a 10 ball progression. 10 balls where I'm chest passing it right close to him so he can just focus on the movement. 10 balls underhanding from the other side of the net from the three meter line. And then finally 10 service, uh, float serves right at him. So gradual progression so he can work on the technique through increasing difficulty. Now that we finished our grooving pattern, trying to focus on one technique, we're gonna finish the passing section on a competitive drill where we play short games from 20 to 25 and we compete. And this is just a good opportunity for us to apply the grooving pattern into a competitive situation. So we're adding that pressure element. Two point passer better is one point for the passer and that's gauged on location and height. And then anything that is beyond like a one point pass or less for the server is one point for the server. And if you get aced, we'll do minus one for the passer. On the first one, Kai's got a better jump float than me, so I think it's gonna be a tough round, but Kai put up a good fight. So my weakest area is passing from area one, so I'm gonna serve you see from there. 
Kai's weakest area, he wants to work on his area five. That's why we switched. Now that we finished our serve receive competition, we're just gonna get lots and lots of reps just to continue to build our touch, but in a different area. Even though we do have our weak areas, it's important not to get stuck there and just continue to work on all around skill development. Uh, Cause you'd be surprised sometimes working on one, sometimes taking a break on one skill actually will make that skill better just by viewing it from a different perspective and a different angle.